Meet Jeff. Just a regular guy. Loved pizza. Hated Mondays. Thought Jupiter looked kinda chill through his telescope. So, when someone offered him a seat on an experimental spacecraft headed straight for the biggest planet in the solar system, Jeff was like, sure, why not? Huge mistake. Because Jupiter... Well, Jupiter is basically the solar system's final boss, wrapped in thick clouds, riddled with lightning, and absolutely not interested in keeping you alive. Jeff steps outside his ship. Above him, space, the stars, the endless black. Below him, a swirling mess of orange tan and, uh-oh, no ground, no guideposts, just a never-ending vortex of stormy gas. 90% hydrogen, 10% helium, 100% nope. Then, he jumps, and, well, gravity grabs him like it's got something to prove. You see, Jupiter's gravity is 2.5 times stronger than Earth's. That's 24.79 meters per second squared, enough to turn a fall into a full-blown nosedive. There's basically no air resistance up there, so just a few lonely hydrogen atoms floating in the vacuum. No parachute, no brakes, just Jeff. And a deep-growing sense of, I have made a terrible mistake. For a moment, it's calm, cold, almost peaceful, like skydiving into a void. But then, the speed hits. Jeff is now falling at 170,000 kilometers per hour. That is 47 kilometers per second, or Mach 140. In other words, it's you're already vapor before you can even scream fast. Oh, and let's talk about the radiation, why don't we? Jupiter has a magnetic field that's 14 times stronger than Earth's and stretches out more than 7 million kilometers. That's enough to fit 10 Earths side by side and still have elbow room. It traps particles from the sun and from its hyperactive volcanic moon, Lo, creating an absolute horror show of radiation. These are the Jovian radiation belts. Uh, think Earth's Van Allen belts, but on steroids and spun up in a blender. Up to 10 million rads of radiation swirl around in there, and for context, 500 rads will kill you in about a week. Jeff? Well, he's got 20,000 times that before he even blinks. Within minutes, he's been nuked by high-energy electrons, protons, and heavier ions, all zooming around at near light speed. His spacesuit? It's not built for this. His radiation shielding? Eh, basically wishful thinking. Inside, Jeff's cells are going haywire. His DNA is getting diced, scrambled, and rewritten like someone spilled alphabet soup on a hard drive. He's dealing with neurological damage, radiation sickness, internal bleeding, and a future filled with instant cancer. Assuming he had a future. And yet, he's still falling. But now, things are getting hot. As Jeff plunges deeper, the thin outer layers of Jupiter's atmosphere finally start to push back. And at 170,000 kilometers an hour, that push feels more like a punch. The air in front of him compresses so hard that it turns into plasma, a glowing shell of superheated gas. A shockwave builds, and the temperature around him shoots up to 16,000 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than the surface of the sun. For comparison, NASA's Galileo probe had a specifically designed heat shield just to deal with this. It lasted 58 minutes before it got torn apart by the pressure and heat. Jeff? Eh, he's wearing an off-the-shelf suit and a prayer. His gear chars, melts, and eventually just peels away, atom by atom. What's left is a carbon smear roasting like a marshmallow in a hydrogen firestorm. And still, he falls. If by some miracle, or sheer plot armor, Jeff's incineration is delayed, he passes through Jupiter's famous cloud layers. Sound dreamy, right? Well, you'd be wrong. These clouds are pure nightmare fuel. Ammonia crystals, ammonium hydrosulfide, and steam-hot water vapor. It's like diving into a boiling vat of chemical soup during a lightning storm in an earthquake. The temperature, over 100 degrees Celsius and climbing. And the pressure, around 10 bars. That is 10 times what we experience at sea level here on Earth. Now, at this point, breathing is a joke. And standing, not a chance. Jeff's body feels like it's being flattened by an invisible elephant sitting on every inch of his skin. Blood vessels collapse, organs squish, eardrums, they're gone. And he's not even that deep yet. By now, Jeff is unconscious, cooked, pressurized, maybe even partially liquefied, and gravity's not letting up. But then, there's Jupiter's winds. If you thought a windy day here on Earth was bad, Jupiter laughs in hurricane. 
Its winds aren't gusty. They are relentless, titanic, and turbocharged. Jet streams rip through the atmosphere at speeds of up to 600 kilometers per hour. That is faster than most commercial airplanes and more powerful than a Category 5 hurricane. But unlike hurricanes on Earth, these winds don't weaken. They never stop. They just keep going. Forever. Why? Because Jupiter has no solid surface. There's nothing to slow anything down. There's no land, no oceans, no mountains to trip things up. Just miles and miles of gas stacked in swirling bands of alternating direction. Like a giant barber pole of doom. And poor Jeff, well, he's stuck right in the middle of it. His body is now spinning, flipping, flailing. It's like a rag doll in a blender built by angry gods. The turbulence is so intense, it doesn't just toss you around, it disorients you completely. You wouldn't know which way is up, down, sideways, or inside out. Gravity is pulling you one way, the winds are going another, and your own limbs, well, they're probably not where you left them. But wait, it gets worse. Because this blender comes with lightning. And not the polite, flickery kind you see during a summer storm. No, Jupiter's lightning bolts are up to three times more powerful than anything we have ever recorded here on Earth. Some of these discharges are strong enough to vaporize entire spacecraft components. They shoot through storms that stretch 50 kilometers deep, layered with thick ammonia clouds and charged particles just waiting to explode. It's not just flashes of light, it's bursts of raw, electrifying destruction. Jeff, he's tumbling through it all like meat in a microwave, constantly at risk of being struck by bolts that could melt steel and fry every atom in his body. And then, just when you think it couldn't get more dramatic, it does. Enter the Great Red Spot. Imagine a storm so big you could drop two Earths into it and still have room for snacks. This swirling beast has been raging for at least 350 years, possibly even longer, and it shows no signs of slowing down. Its winds can reach over 700 kilometers an hour, and the pressure differences inside of it are so extreme they generate constant turbulence, shockwaves, and maybe even vertical cyclones within the storm itself. This isn't a storm, it is a planetary monument to chaos. And guess what? Jeff just got sucked into it. One second he's being whipped around by high altitude winds, the next he's spiraling down into the belly of a storm older than the American Revolution. But he's not done. At 100 bars of pressure, water stops behaving like anything you'd find on Earth. It becomes a supercritical fluid. Not quite a liquid, not quite a gas, but something in between with the density of a liquid and the diffusity of a gas. Basically, it's molecular limbo. Definitely not where Jeff wants to be. At 1,000 bars of pressure, about 1,000 times Earth's sea level atmosphere, materials face forces far beyond anything experienced on our planet. Even high-grade materials used in deep sea submersibles would begin to deform or fail. For comparison, the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is about 1.1 kilobar, Jupiter delivers nearly a thousand times that, with no solid surface to stop the squeeze. At this depth, Jeff is now a memory. If there's anything left of him, bone, metal, carbon, it's being crushed, melted, and atomically rearranged into something unrecognizable. And the temperature, climbing past 2000 degrees Celsius and rising. Even light doesn't make it this far. No sunlight, no glowing clouds, just darkness so dense it feels physical. It's pitch black, still, silent, heavy. No more falling in the traditional sense. Now it's sinking, drowning in air so compressed it behaves like a liquid, like falling through molten gas. And then the hydrogen starts to change. It transitions into metallic hydrogen, an exotic, electrically conductive phase theorized to act like a liquid metal. Scientists believe it's responsible for Jupiter's insane magnetic field, and it only forms under pressures of over 3 million times Earth's atmosphere. Jeff is now deep inside a planetary pressure cooker the size of 1,300 Earths. The deeper he goes, the more the laws of nature bend him into an unrecognizable soup. Scientists aren't sure what's at Jupiter's core. Maybe a dense ball of rock and exotic ices forged under crushing pressure, Maybe just more superheated metallic hydrogen pretending to be a solid. No land, no floor. Just gradients of matter getting denser, stranger, and hotter the deeper you go. But Jeff's not going to find out. At this depth, pressures soar past 2 million times Earth's atmosphere. 
temperature spiked to an estimated 20,000 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of the sun. Even atoms are getting uncomfortable, their electrons stripped away, matter reduced to raw energy and chaos. Everything Jeff ever was, whether it be his flesh, his suit, thoughts, his dreams, it's all long since ceased to exist. He's plasma now, a diffuse smear of once was, dissolved into Jupiter's roaring heart. No trace, no remains, no goodbye. Congratulations, Jeff, you are Jupiter. So, could you survive Jupiter? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Between the radiation, gravity, heat, pressure, and lack of solid, well, anything, Jupiter is a murder planet. It is not built for human life. I mean, it's barely built for robotic probes. Even the best NASA tech gets chewed up and spit out. Jupiter is like nature's way of saying, you can look, you can wonder, but don't you dare try me. And yet, it's beautiful. Jupiter shapes the solar system. Its gravity protects Earth by flinging deadly comets away. Its storms are accidents. Its moons might harbor life. It's a monster, yes, but it's our monster. Maybe Jeff didn't die in vain. Maybe he became one with the poetry of physics. Or maybe he just made a very stupid decision. Either way, we salute him. And we stay far, far away.